Hello and welcome, my name is Olive. So this class is going to be a modified Ashtanga class. Modified in the sense that we do follow elements of the primary series, obviously guided, it can take like an hour and a half to two hours. So I've obviously reduced it in that time, but modified as well because I'm drawing in my own elements of dynamic and active stretches and joint work and mobility. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. All you're gonna need is your yoga mat and if you usually practice with a bolster or a block as well, feel free to grab that. But I will see you then, we're starting standing up. We're going to start practice at the top of our mat and come into some sun salutations straight off the bat just to warm the body up and check in with our breathing. So before we get there, try to establish about hip distance in your feet. Try to spread your toes, balance between the balls of the feet, the heels, maybe rock yourself backwards and forwards just to establish sort of that even sense of balance. Try to roll the shoulders down, encourage them to loosen, bring them to their natural position. Then as you come to some stillness, palms facing forwards, head and spine is nice and elongated. Just close down the eyes for a second. We're just going to check in with our breathing. So noticing every inhalation, every exhalation that comes and leaves the body. Noticing the movement into your chest as a ribcage expands. and the rib cage returning to its resting state as you exhale. Feeling the breath not only move in the front of your body, but to your side body, to your back. Feeling the breath move into the belly where the diaphragm is. Feeling it enter the nostrils down the back of the throat. And then Releasing the same kind of way, same pattern. Then seeing if you can start to almost lengthen the exhalation. So allowing ourselves to be more in the parasympathetic state of the nervous system. More rest and recover. Slower heart rate, lower blood pressure. Lower levels of cortisol the stress hormone. So allowing ourselves to move through a moving meditation. That's the beauty of Ashtanga. So when you're ready, wiggle into the fingers, wiggle into the toes, maybe roll through your wrists, blink the eyes open. Then as you find stillness, take a nice deep inhale, sweep the hands up above the head, squeezing the butt, bracing through the core. Exhaling to fold yourself forwards, bend the knees, let the hands land, look behind you. Inhale, come up to halfway lift, hands to the shins, draw the belly button in, looking in front. And then exhale as the hands land, step yourself back to a plank position. We're going to inhale here, bracing through the body. Exhale, knees come down, elbows come in tight, lower the whole body down to the ground. Inhale. Lifting just as high as or as low as you want to go. Exhale, push back into downward facing dog. So first downward dog, we're going to be here for five breaths. So pedal out the feet, move through the head, anything at all. Check in with the breathing, check in you're not holding on to it. I'm going to go for one more breath here. Next, inhale to look between the hands, bring your shoulders over the wrists, step the feet forwards, come back to halfway lift, so hands on the shins looking in front. Exhale to fold, knees can bend, look behind you. Inhale, push through the floor, circle the hands up. Exhale, arrive down. Service ED. Cool, we're gonna go through Sun Salutation A one more time. Again, linking in with our breath a little bit more. When you're ready, inhale, circle the hands up. Exhale, fold. Inhale to halfway lift, see if you want to play around with the hand position. Exhale, hands down, step back to your plank. Inhale, prepare the body here. Exhale, lower down with the knees or without the knees. Inhale to lift the chest as high as you want to go. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, squeeze the butt. Exhale into downward facing dog. So again, five breaths here. Make sure you're really trying to push through the whole hand. So the heel of the hand, the fingertips, the knuckles included. 
and making sure the shoulders are being supported so not just collapsing into that don't worry if the heels are off the ground or if you have to bend the legs one more breath here next inhalation look between the hands again step or jump to the top of your mat arrive back halfway lift exhale folding yourself forwards inhale push through the feet circle those hands up exhale landing Samasiti. Lovely, we're going to come into two rounds of Sun Salutation B now. So take the feet about as wide as your hips, hands start by your side. Inhale, you're going to bend the knees, hinge at the hips, draw the hands up, coming into chair pose. Exhale, folding yourself forwards, legs as straight as you want them to go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, stepping back to plank. Inhale, prepare, brace through the core. Exhale, lower down, with or without the knees. Inhale, lift the chest as high as you want to go. Exhale, down and facing dog. Instead of warrior one, we're going to come into a high lunge. So inhale, float the right leg straight behind you, coming into three-legged dog. Next inhale, look between the hands, shoulders over the wrist, knee to the chest. Plant the foot wherever you can. Ground down through the legs and inhale, rising all the way up. High lunge. Establishing the strong foundations in the feet. Engaging the glutes, lifting through the chest. One more breath here. And then exhale, hands down, step back to your plank. Inhale again, prepare. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lifting. And exhale to down dog. Lovely. Next inhale, float that left leg straight behind you. Inhale to look forwards, plant the foot. Ground down, draw the hands up above your head. Again, bracing through the core, stabilizing through the hips, through the pelvis. One more breath. Exhale, hands down, back to plank. Inhale here. Exhale, lowering. Inhale to lift. Exhale, down dog. Five breaths here, finding stillness or finding movement. Try to relax the head, maybe encourage it to go side to side. Allow that breath to get deeper. Allow it to get more audible. Just remember to still breathe. Go for one more breath here. Next inhale, look between the hands. Step or jump to the top of your mat. Again, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, bend those knees, sink back into the hips, hands above the head, into chair pose. And then exhale, releasing. Seven, CD. Okay, let's do it one more time. So again, start feet wide. Inhale, bend the knees, hinge at the hips, hands up, chair pose. Exhale, folding yourself forwards. Inhale, halfway lift, use the core to brace. Exhale, hands down, back to your plank. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lower down with or without the knees. Inhale to lift, push through the hands. Exhale, down with dog. Inhale, float the right leg behind you, three-legged dog. Next inhale, look between the hands, plant the foot there. As you ground, draw both hands up. This is perhaps the most active bit of class. <laughs> it's designed to help build the heat in the body. Take one more breath here. Then exhale, hands down, step back to your plank. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale to lift, push through the hands. Exhale, down dog. Last little bit, inhale, float the left leg behind you. Inhale, look between the hands, plant the foot there. Inhale, lifting up. Remember, activation into that right glute in particular. One more breath here. Exhale, hands down, step back to your plank. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lowering. Inhale to lift. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. So of course when we come into the main practice, you can avoid or skip through the vinyasas that we do. You don't have to do every single one. See how you feel, adapt your practice as you move on. Let's go for one more breath here. 
Next inhale, look between the hands. Step or jump again to the top of your mat, halfway left. Exhale, folding. Inhale, push through the floor, lift up, coming back to chair pose one last time. Exhale, release. Salazidi. So hopefully we're feeling a little bit warmer, nice and loose, ready for our first little sequence. So draw the hands onto your hips. And you're gonna hop your feet about hip distance apart. We're coming into a forward fold first of all, and it involves taking the index and middle finger, wrapping around our big toe. So inhale, find length through your spine. Exhale, you're gonna start by pushing your hips behind you, folding to about 90 degrees. So try to really engage your thighs and engage and switch on through the hamstrings, bracing through the core. We're gonna hover here for a second. One more breath. And then if you need to, bend your knees so you can bring your chest down to your thighs. You're gonna interlace or wrap your index and middle finger around your big toe, pop the thumbs on top. Inhale, straighten up the arms to look forwards and fill the lungs with air. And then on the exhale, you're gonna bend your elbows, send them out to either side, draw the chin to the chest, and slowly start to look behind you. So take your time to settle into the pose. We're here for five breaths. Doesn't matter if the legs were straight or if they're bent, but try to remember the head is still part of the spine. So we're trying to find length in it. So don't crane your neck forwards. And a lot of forward folds are about how much the brain trusts that we're not just gonna fall to the ground. And the way that we sort of manage that is by breathing nice and deep, nice and slow. Take one more breath here. Then inhale, you're gonna to start to slowly, slowly straighten up those arms, looking forwards. Take those hands onto those hips, squeeze the glutes, come all the way up through to standing. From here, we're gonna take a step back with the right leg, turn those toes to face the long edge of the mat, left toes still facing forwards. We're gonna come into Trikonasana, so opening up the hands, one in front, one behind. Before we get there, we're gonna look at some thoracic isolation. So without moving the lower body, so really engaging through the glutes, the inner outer thigh, Move forwards with the torso and then move back with the torso. So imagine your legs are glued to the floor. The only part of the body you can move is your thoracic region. So it's just getting a bit more control over it. One more time, forwards and then backwards. And as you find stillness this time, as you move forwards, go as far in front of you as you can before letting the left hand land to the inside of the leg Right hand extends straight above. Still really pressing down into both feet. This left hand can go anywhere it wants to go. Can interlace around the big toe, can stay on the inside of the calf or inner thigh. See where you want to go. Take one more breath here. And then inhale, push through, coming all the way up. Transitioning into a low lunge. As you turn to look forwards, bend into the front leg, pick up the back heel, lift both hands up into high lunge, then slowly drop down to the back knee. Hands come down to heart center. Gonna do a little bit of a loaded quad stretch, I really enjoy this. So take your left hand to hold your right shoulder. Right hand is gonna go by your side. You're gonna start to rotate towards the right side and see if you can lean back and tap the right heel and slowly return forwards to neutral. And then again, rotate towards the right, see if you can tap the back heel, and forwards. Just two more times, leaning back and tapping, slowly forwards. It's a lovely dynamic move to strengthen the hip flexors. Good. As you come back, release hands above, and then draw them down to your heart center. So nice and stable through the lower body. Take an inhale. Exhale, you're gonna to start to twist and rotate towards the left hand side. Try not to let the hips move, keep stability. And then if you would like, you can either stay here or you can start to fold forwards. Take the right elbow to the outside of the left knee and encourage a little bit more of a twist. Doesn't matter where we end up, but try to avoid just collapsing your whole chest down to the knee. You're not really using the muscles there to find the twist. You're just relying on an external force. Okay, we're gonna take one more breath here. 
And then on your next inhale, push through the right toe, see if you can start to lift that knee off the floor. So we come into a little bit more of an elevated twist. We're gonna take one more breath here. Last one. And then a tricky transition. As we slowly come all the way up into high lunge again, we're gonna open up both legs to face along out of the mat and open up through the hands. So wide legged forward fold coming up. Inhale here. Exhale, push the hips behind you again, folding to about 90 degrees. So bracing through the core, squeezing the glutes, seeing if we can hover here for a second. You can take the hands wherever. And then slowly, if you need, bend the legs, plant the hands to the floor. Inhale to lift, fill the lungs with air one more time. Then exhale, bending and folding. Bend those elbows. If you practice tripod headstand, you're welcome to come up into a transition for it. If not, no worries. See wherever you feel comfortable. We're going to take one more breath here. Make sure there's weight between the toes, between the heels. And then inhale again, straightening up those arms, looking forwards. Squeeze the glutes, release the hands to your hips. Push through the floor, coming all the way up to standing. Lovely. Turn the left toes forward, step that right leg in, coming up to standing CD. Inhale, circle those hands up. Exhale, folding down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, stepping back to plank. Inhale, prepare the body. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Again, remember you can come straight to down dog if you would rather. Inhale to lift. Exhaling to down dog. So as we're here, we'll take five breaths here. See if you want to move around. See if you want to wiggle. If you need to take a break in child's pose. If you need to breathe more. All these things, always checking in with the body. One more breath. Next inhale, still up between the hands. Step or jump again, halfway lift. Exhale, folding. Inhale, draw the hands above the head. Then exhale, release. To sound the seat. You're going to come into a slightly different forward fold this time, but again, hands to the hips. Hop your hips about hip distance apart. So again, inhale, we're going to lengthen through the spine. Exhale, start to push your hips back, engage through the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads. See if you can come to about 90 degrees, bracing through the core. This time we're gonna stand on our hands. It's quite a nice release with the wrists. So bend the knees again, let the chest come down to the thighs. You're gonna take your hands and plant them underneath your feet, seeing if you can take the toes up to the wrists. If this feels like it's too much, you can take the backs of the hands to the shins or lower leg and fold. But again, we inhale here, fill the lungs with air, look forwards. Exhale, start to slowly fold. Take your time to look behind you. And again, now more than ever, focus on the breath. Make sure there's even weight between the heels, between the toes, between the hands. See if you want to see or send the elbows out to either side as well. One more breath here. Next inhale, straighten up those arms, look forwards, release the hands to your hips. Push through the ground, squeeze the glutes as you come all the way up to standing. And then when you're ready, take that left leg, step it behind you, turn those toes to face the long edge of the mat, right one still facing forwards. Inhale, we open out the hands, and again, thoracic isolation. So engage through the lower body, reach forwards first, and then draw all the way back. Again, forwards, and then back. There's also like, not an awful lot of range here. But it's just nice exploring. Last time. Back to stillness, this time into Trikonasana. Reaching forwards with that right hand. Let the hand land the inside of the right leg wherever it wants to go before slowly turning the head, looking up to the left hand. Remember the breath here. Try to continuously press into the back foot. Have weight there, because a lot of your body weight is now forwards. Good, we're gonna take one more breath here. Exhale, look down at the right leg. Inhale, coming all the way back up. Sweeping into high lunge. Bend into the front leg, pick up the back heel, hands come up above your head. Slowly lower down to that back knee. Cool. 
So again, take the right hand to hold the left shoulder. As you twist towards the left, left hand to tap the left heel slowly forwards. Take your time, twist, rotate, lean back and tap. I'm going to do that two more times. Rotate and lean. Last time. Slowly come back, release hands up. Exhale, draw them down to your heart. Inhale here. Exhale, twist and rotate to the right hand side. Establish this twist and rotation first, and then take left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Again, trying to stay away from just collapsing the chest onto the thigh. Make sure those glutes are engaged. We'll take one more breath here. Now when you're ready, push into the left toes, lift that knee. So squeezing the glutes, making use of the hamstrings, pushing into the big toe of the front leg. Good, we're gonna take one more breath here. Then inhale, come up into high lunge. Straighten up the front leg, turn all 10 toes to face the line of the mat, opening out the hands. So the last little bit in this sequence, inhale, expand through the hands. Exhale, push those hips behind you, folding to again 90 degrees. This time, index and middle finger, they wrap around the big toes, so bend the legs if you need. Inhale, looking forwards. Exhale, bending those elbows, try to send them to either side of your mat. Drop the chin to the chest, lurking behind you. Again, when we do these movements, it doesn't matter if those legs are bent at all. Just make sure you're breathing and make sure you're putting weight between the heels, between the toes. One more breath here. Inhale, start to slowly lift. Release those hands to your hips, squeeze the glutes, take your time coming all the way up. Releasing those right toes forwards, step in, and the CT. Inhale, circle the hands up. Exhale, folding. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, back to your plank. So again, take your time to move through a vinyasa or come straight to down dog, whatever you would prefer. And once you're in down dog, we're going to be there for again five breaths before having a play with some leg balances. So one more breath here. Next inhale to lift between the hands, step or jump again, halfway lift. Exhale, folding. Inhale, reaching those hands up. Exhale, draw them down to your heart. Release to Samasiti. Lovely, so for our leg balances, we're gonna to start to shift the weight, first of all, onto the left foot. So spread the toes as wide as possible. Hands are gonna to go to your hips to start with. Inhale, start to bring a bent leg up as high as you can. So lifting that right knee as high as you want to go and try to relax this foot to start with. So use a little bit more hip flexor. Good, so finding that balance doesn't matter if you fall. You're going to take that right hand to just hold that right knee. You're going to do a little bit of activation for the hip flexors. I want you to try really push that knee into that hand and pull the knee with the hand. So there's resistance between the two, as if they're fighting against one another. One more breath like this. And then release the hand back to the hip, relax. Slowly, slowly, we're going to open up that right leg towards the right hand side. See if you want to bend the left leg a little bit. Finding balance, keeping those hips facing forwards. And again, same thing. Hand to the knee, try to push them into one another. We're creating resistance, we're creating a bit more strength into the hip flexors in different ranges for the hips. One more breath. And then release, relax. Draw that knee back to centre, both hands to your hips. Now you're gonna draw this knee towards the ground and lift up the ankle towards the sky, coming into internal rotation with the hips. Both hands on. <laughs> And then bend your left leg, take that right ankle on top, hands to heart centre, standing figure four. Go as low or as high as you want to go. You can stay here or you can take fingertips to the floor. Whatever feels good. Breathing here again, like I said, if you need to fall, that's fine. One more breath. And then inhale, start to slowly straighten up the left leg, bring that knee back to the chest. Then exhale, land to chair pose, bending both legs, 
hands up, or you can take them in front. Just have a little wriggle side to side. Cool. Now when you're ready, exhale forward, just half forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, stepping back to plank. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale to lift. Exhale, down and duck. So give a little bit of love to the left leg. Shake it out a little bit before we come to do the balances on the right side. Cool. Let's go for one more breath here. Next inhale to look between the hands. Step or jump, halfway lift. Exhale, folding. Inhale, circling both hands up. Exhale, release. To sell a CD. So coming on to the right side, spreading the toes on the right leg nice and wide. Hands on your hips. Inhale, lifting the left knee as high as you want it to go again. Try and relax the ankle, so not too much dorsal or plantar flexion. Cool. Resistance time. Left hand to the knee. Push each into one another. Create that resistance. Create that strength. One more breath. And then release. Hand back to your hip. Slowly, slowly start to open the leg out towards the left hand side. Just a little bit. Hips still facing forwards. And again, hands to the knee. Create that resistance. Push them into one another. You should feel the glutes switching on. In and out of pie. One more breath. And then releasing. Hands back to the hip. Draw the leg forwards. Now drop the knee towards the ground. Lift the foot up. Again, internal rotation. Bending that right leg. Take that ankle on top. Bending, coming into your figure four. Think about driving the knee towards the ground a little bit more. Engaging the glutes. Again, go as low or as high as you want. Find that nice little sweet spot. And take one more breath here. And then as you start to straighten up the right leg, bring the left knee all the way back to the chest. Exhale, release into chair pose. Hands up or straight in front. And then have a little wriggle side to side. When you're ready, exhale, fold yourself forwards. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, back to your pipes. Inhale, prepare. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lifting. And exhale to downward dog. Going to be here for five more breaths. Then we're going to start coming down into some more floor work. So again, have a little wriggle, give some love to the right leg, whatever needs to happen. Beautiful. One more breath here. So next inhales, looking between those hands. We're going to bring ourselves down to seated. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either step in and then come down onto your bum, or you can do a little jump. If you want to do the jump, you look between the hands. You tell yourself, I'm going to land there with my legs crossed. <laughs> you come up nice and high to your tiptoes. You bend the knees, you load your legs. You jump up, you lift your hips and cross the legs as you land and release those feet out in front of you. Doesn't matter how you got down, obviously one takes a little bit more practice, but yeah. So Dandasana, you're going to sit on your bum, so maybe pull the cheeks apart, <laughs> actually find the sit bones, and drawing those legs together, you're going to start to peel your toes back towards you. So you activate through the quads enough that you almost lift your heels off the ground, or maybe they do come completely off. Your hands are then going to go down by your side, they are nice and straight so the spine is in neutral, and your hands are going to float off the ground. Then you're going to drop your chin to your chest. So it's one of the most active poses that we have in Ashtanga, even though it looks relatively simple. But my upper body, my core, my quads, my hamstrings, everything is switched on. And I'm shaking. <laughs> so remember to breathe. One more breath. And then slowly soften everything, slowly release. And I have a little bit of a look at some hip flexor strengthening movements because we're going to have a look next time at an arm balance. So start to point the right toes, hands stay by your side. Just see how high up you can lift the leg. And then with control, slowly place it down. I'm going to do five of these in total on each leg. So lift for two, slowly. 
slowly down. For three, slowly down. Try not to lean back as you lift. Try to keep the body nice and still. One more time. Lovely, let that leg relax, give it a shake. If you cramped up, no worries. And then onto the left leg, point the toes, squeeze and lift for one, slowly down. Again for two, slowly down. For three, super important as well that you try to lower with like even more control because the negative is where you build the strength last time. And release and relax, shake it out. Into reverse tabletop, slide those legs in. You're gonna plant your hands behind you, fingertips facing forwards. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, push through the feet. Inhale to lift the hips as high up as you wanna go. Try to squeeze the glutes, squeeze shoulder blades. And if you would like, tilt the head, look behind. Now we wanna switch on the hamstrings when we're here. So imagine your heels are about to drag up towards your hands. So you feel those hamstrings switch on. So we encourage the hips to stay more into internal rotation and we don't feel any compensation in the lumbar spine. We can take one more breath here. To come out of it, slowly draw the chin back to your chest, let the hips come down to the ground, release those legs in front, and just roll out through the wrist, shake out with those hands. Lovely. From here, we're gonna take the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Let's switch angles so you can see. And from here, we're going to slide that right leg in. Catching the outside of the right foot with the hands, and we're going to start just holding here. Take a nice deep inhale. And then on the exhale, slide that right leg away. Try to keep contact with the foot so you only slide as much as you can go. So it doesn't matter where we end up, but whatever position we're in, just breathe. And determine if it feels better to continue looking forwards or if it feels better to drop the chin down to the chest. Think about engaging the left glute as you press that left knee to the floor. I'm gonna go for one more breath here. Inhale, release the hands from the foot, slide them all the way back up and allow that leg to go straight. Now picking up that left knee, we're going to take about a hand's distance between the left foot and the right thigh. So make sure both butt cheeks are on the ground. We're going to start by taking the left hand straight behind us and just holding this left knee with our right hand. So inhale here as you look forwards. Exhale, completely try to empty the lungs. And then find yourself twisting and rotating towards the left hand side. As you do so, maybe the hand stays on the knee or maybe the forearm travels down the thigh, or maybe the arm opens up on top. See whatever feels best for you, but remember to maintain the breath as you twist deeper. Also, try not to forget about the right leg. Remember those toes. One more breath here. Then inhale, slowly rotating forwards. Release the hands, release that left leg. Hands are going to open by your side. As you slide the heels in, see if you can lift the feet off the ground coming into bent legged boat pose. Feel free to hold the backs of the thighs if you would like, but keep the core braced, keep breathing. Maybe you straighten up if you would like. Breathing here for two. Let those legs shake. One more breath. And then we're going to cross those legs in, plant those hands, step ourselves back to plank. Again, inhale, prepare. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale to roll and lift. Exhale, through down, facing top. So again, before we come on to the other side, check in with the breath. How is it moving? What's it doing? What about the body? How are you feeling? Do you need to adapt to practice? All these questions constantly asking. Cool. So next inhale, look between those hands. Once again, step or jump down to seated. Releasing those feet out in front of you. So now the last we're gonna see if we can play around with a little bit more of an arm balance this time. So hands again are gonna go by your side. This is tricky, so take your time to learn it. Don't worry if it's not gonna happen immediately. 
it's hard. <laughs> so you're going to push into those hands and try to allow the heels to slide back to you. So as you push into the hands, see if you can lift the bum. Good. Then back down. So all you're going to do, practice pushing into the hands, squeezing, lifting the bum off the floor. Maybe practice that a few times. And then if you feel comfortable, this time as you lift the bum, see if you can drag the heels back and lift the bum higher. And then come back down. And again, push into the hands, lift the bum, drag the heels and lift. If that's going pretty well, maybe see if you can drag and lift and then lift the heels off the ground as well. Coming all the way up into Dandasana. Like I said, just play, just experiment. Might not happen, but it's worth having a play. <laughs> and then release, relax, roll through those wrists, shake that. Coming back into reverse tabletop, plant the feet to the floor. This time, you're going to turn your fingertips away from you. So we buy a small external rotation with the shoulders. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, push through the feet, lift up through the hips as high as you want them to go. Either continue looking forwards or tilt the head opening up behind. But again, same thing. Think about engagement in the glutes, engagement into those hamstrings, embracing through the core. Pushing through the hands, supporting the shoulders. One more breath here. Chin to the chest, slowly lower all the way back down. Release through those legs. Shake through those wrists. Lovely. Then when you're ready, right foot comes to the inside of that left thigh. Slide the left leg in, catch the foot. Inhale here. Exhale, slide that leg away as low as it can go, maintain the contact, doesn't matter if the leg is straight or not. Continue looking forwards or look down to that knee. Again, making sure that right knee is supported by the glutes as it presses down towards the floor. One more breath here. And then slowly release that leg straight, coming all the way upright. Pick up that right knee, about a hand's distance between the foot and between the thigh. Right hand goes behind you, left hand to hold the right knee. Inhale, looking forwards. Exhaling completely. Twist and rotate towards the right hand side. Again, play around with the arm position of the left hand if you would like. See where it can go. Just make sure you're supporting yourself with our right hand and you're not forgetting about the left toes. Take one more breath here. And then slowly, slowly release, looking forwards, release the legs, give them a little shake out. This time slightly different. Just slide the legs in, index the middle finger, wrap them around the big toe, thumb comes on top. Now take your time with this. You're gonna walk the heels in a little bit. Put more weight into your bum and see if you can slowly lift the heels off the ground. It doesn't matter if the legs are bent or if they're straight. But the trick is to really push the toes into the fingers, create that resistance again. Try and roll the shoulders, squeeze them together. Breathing here for three, for two. And then on one, release across the legs, plant the hands, step back into your plank. Inhale. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhaling, downward dog. Beautiful, so again, five breaths here, check in with what you need. Stillness or movement, awareness of the breath. We're coming into our final sequence. Some heart openers, some inversions. One more breath here. Next inhale, look between the hands, bring yourself down to seated, release those feet out in front of you. Now we're going to come down onto our backs, so taking those palms together, push the heels to the ground, slowly, slowly lower down one vertebrae at a time, using the core to control, and then when you land, reach the arms above your head, roll through the wrists, roll through the ankles. We're going to come into two rounds of bridge pose with some modifications. <clears throat> so plant the feet on the ground, about hip distance apart. And check you can feel your heels with your fingertips. Super important bit. <laughs> so hands by your side. When you're ready, engage your glutes. Engage and brace your core. Start to slowly peel one vertebrae at a time, up and off the ground. 
So again, similar like we did before, think about dragging your heels back towards your shoulders, so activating those hamstrings. Imagine you're bracing and holding a beach ball between your thighs. Not too tight that it's going to pop, but not too loose that it's just going to fall away. So inner thighs are on glutes, core, pushing through the big toe, through the heels. And of course, breathing. And take one more breath like this. And then slowly curl all the way back down. Hug your knees into the chest. Inhale, draw them super, super close. Exhale, push the knees away. Inhale to draw them in super tight. And exhaling away. Planting them back onto the floor. So you can either come back into little bridge or you can come up into full pose of wheel if you would like. So again, just check you can feel the heels with your fingertips. If you're coming into full pose, hands go next to the ears, elbows pointing up towards the ceiling. Whenever you're ready, inhale, push through your feet, start to lift up one vertebrae at a time. If you're coming into full pose, take the weight up into the hands, push up through the whole body. Wherever you are, we're going to be here for a couple of breaths. So breathing. Same principles, pushing through the whole foot, engaging in the glutes, the core, the inner thigh, the hamstrings. If we're in full pose, try to encourage your chest to open by pushing the chest towards the back of your mat. Come down whenever you need. One more breath. And then slowly, slowly, lowering all the way back down. One vertebrae at a time, releasing those legs, hugging the knees into the chest nice and tightly on the inhale. Exhale to release. Last time, inhale in. Exhale, releasing. Lovely. When you're ready, hug the knees, rock up and down two or three times. Now we're going to come into shoulder stand for arm pleasure. So rocking up, getting yourself all prepped. Checking your surroundings. I'll give an option if you don't want to practice shoulder stand. But as you come up, slowly rock yourself back, lifting up the feet above the hips, taking your time to settle into shoulder stand. Options, if we're not wanting to practice that, we can practice legs straight above the hips. You can do this also against a ball, or maybe you put a pillow or a bolster underneath your low back and your sacrum. Now feel free to stay here. Or move those legs around, create some patterns. Or maybe even practice plow pose, where the feet go behind the head and you release the hands by your side. Or maybe ear pressure pose, ears either side of, knees either side of the ears, <laughs> hands by your side. See where you want to go, check you can still breathe. Now yeah, we'll be here for two more breaths. Wherever we are, Slowly, slowly, round down one vertebrae at a time. Bring yourself all the way back up to seated. Feet go out in front of you. And now for our lovely little counter pose of fish. As my breath returns to normal. Hands are going to go by your side. And then slowly lower down onto your elbows, onto your forearms. You can even sit on your hands if you would like. But as you push into the forearms and the elbows, you encourage extension of the spine. And slowly tilt the head behind you. The more you drive the elbows into the ground, that the greater the sort of stretch sensation is to the front of your shoulders, maybe even into your pecs. Usually practice this pose with your head on the ground as well. Go for it. I'm gonna take one more breath here. To come out of it, chin all the way back to the chest. Push through the hands, lift yourself up. Crossing those legs in, finding a seated pose, a comfortable seat. Whether you sit one ankle in front of the other, whether you sit in half lotus, or whether you sit in full lotus, doesn't matter, sit on a block if you need. The hands are going to be by your side. Roll the shoulders down, try to lengthen through the spine. I'm just going to take your thumb on top of your index nail, going into a mudra, mudra of knowledge. Closing down the eyes and dropping the chin to the chest. Our final pose, we're going to be here for eight breaths. Listening to every inhalation and every exhalation that travels in and out of the body. 
picking out on any physical sensations, temperature of the body, muscular sensations, aches, pains, tension, tightness, areas that feel good or strong. Just listen into the body, listen into what it's telling you after practice. Taking two more breaths here. And whenever you're ready, just start to release through the fingers, give them a little wiggle. Maybe a roll through the wrists, maybe through the feet, the ankles, whatever, shoulders. And keep those eyes closed as you draw your hands together at your heart center. You can take a moment to thank yourself for your movement and your practice. Feel free to take Shavasana. Whenever you're ready, rubbing the palms together, building the heat, hands over the eyes. And just bring yourself back to your room when you're ready. So thank you so much for practicing along with me. I hope you enjoyed. If there are any questions or comments or future video requests, let me know. And I will see you next time.